Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Lesson for Sunday, September 6, 2020. We are beginning a new quarter, uh, the fall quarter, uh, Lesson 1, Unit 1. Unit 1 is entitled Struggles with Love. In fact, throughout this quarter, uh, we are going to be discussing uh, the topic of love. The first unit is entitled Struggles with Love. And there are four lessons taken from Genesis between the 6th of September and the 27th of September. Unit two is entitled Inclusive Love. And that will will cover four lessons in October uh, taken from 1 Samuel, Luke, and 1 Corinthians. And the third unit is entitled Godly Love Among Believers. And there are five lessons in November that will be taken from John, the Gospel of John, 1 John, Acts, and then James. We are, um, I I was about to say, I I recall one of the commentators um, recalling a commercial that ran back in the 60s. Uh, that demonstrated that love, at least as it's used in uh, the United States, uh, uh, it does not have much meaning. And the commercial was one for Shell Oil, and it basically said, your car loves Shell gasoline. (laughs) Your car loves Shell gasoline. And he, he said, what kind of nonsense, you know, to suggest that an inanimate, uh, uh, object or piece of equipment could love gasoline uh, when the same term is used to um, uh, to describe the relationship between a husband and a wife and a parent and a child uh, it just loses meaning and of course th- those of you bi- uh, Bible scholars are aware that uh, the New Testament of course which was mostly uh, written in Greek, Greek and Aramaic, uh, the use, uh, uh, the word love translated uh, from the Greek really has four, at least four distinct meanings. Uh, one of which is, uh, and it, it, it's, one translates the word eros, which is romantic love. Uh, one uh, translates the word phileo, uh, which is brotherly love, and Philadelphia is named, uh, uh, that name Philadelphia is derived from that. Another, storge, which is sibling love, a love of your natural brothers and sisters, and then, of course, the highest, uh, the benevolent, the self-sacrificing love of God is agape. And so, uh, to just, just, uh, I agree uh, with the the commentator that we use love um, in inappropriate ways. We should have some other ways of describing our affection for chocolate or some type of other type of dessert. I like it or I really enjoy it, but not necessarily uh, love. But having said all that, um, we are uh, again beginning unit one, which is entitled Struggles with Love, from the Faith Pathway Adult Quarterly. Our lesson title is When Love is Lost, When Love is Lost. Our devotional reading is taken from Psalm 105, verses 1 to 6, and then verses 16 to 22. Our background scripture is Genesis chapter 37. And then our printed passage or lesson text is Genesis chapter 37, verses 2 to 11, and then verses 23 to 24, and then 28. And the aims from the quarterly are, number one, to examine the circumstances of familial love and hatred between Israel's sons, or Jacob slash Israel's sons. Number two, 
repent of times when they allowed jealousy and hatred to override commitment a commitment to love and number three develop a strategy to allow a commitment to love to override feelings of jealousy and hatred our lesson outline has three divisions after the introduction the first is entitled parental favoritism that's covered between genesis 37 verses 2 and 4 the second is a dreamer's folly that's covered between verses 5 and 11 and the last is when love is lost and that's covered between verses 23 24a and 28 and our key verse is verse 11 Genesis 37 11 which reads his brethren envied him but his father observed the sayings from the standard commentary our lesson title is biased love biased love we all know what word bias means it means to be uh, to show favoritism uh, to be uh, to, to, it can mean to prejudge as well, but primarily to show favoritism. Additional aims from the standard are, number one, identify the cause and effects of Jacob's favoritism. We'll spend just a few minutes talking about that. Explain how Joseph contributed to the effects of the problem, what the problem caused. And then number three, Repent of having demonstrated biased love and seek to make amends for having done so. Now, we know the Bible has, especially the New Testament, has a lot to say about love. Uh, in fact, the disciple of love, John, has a lot to say in his epistle. And I would advise you to read that. Um, it is uh, our ability to love uh, is perhaps the most um, uh, proving evidence, uh, important evidence of our relationship with God. Uh, especially read John, First John chapter four, and, uh, and 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 actually throughout that epistle, uh, John teaches us how we can know whether we're in a genuine relationship with God. And it all has to do with our love, our, certainly our love for God, but our, ability, our love for God is actually shown through loving others as well. And he says, if we can't love those, our brethren, who we can see, how can we love God who we cannot see? But anyway, just on the subject of love, read that. Now, uh, we're going to, uh, we're going to have, uh, uh, just a few uh, comments on the background and then we'll have a word of prayer and we'll get right into our lesson. As uh, most of you know, uh, this uh, is uh, the, 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 the setting, if you will, of our lesson text is in the fourth generation uh, of Abraham. Uh, we know that uh, Jacob was the son of Isaac, who was the son of Abraham. So Jacob was uh, the grandson of uh, Abraham, and Jacob had received the promise uh, that, that uh, God had given Abraham concerning his descendants, concerning his seed. Uh, now, and, and we know that, uh, that Jacob, uh, through the aid or with the aid of his mother, uh, had uh, deceived uh, his father who was blind at that point, his father Isaac, and received the blessing that would ordinarily go to the oldest son. Uh, and we can go back in Genesis chapter 25 and read that account. I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 27. Um, we, uh, we also know that 
Jacob uh, does show bias or favoritism toward Joseph and will and Joseph was born around uh, 1916 BC that's pretty precise one of the commentators says uh, and uh, he was the second to the last of 12 sons and one daughter born to Jacob and uh, we know that Jacob uh, having been party to this deception that uh, his mother uh, involved him in of his father knew very well uh, what it was to uh, to be in a, a household where favoritism was shown and practiced. Uh, one of the uh, verses from our devotional, uh, that is uh, Genesis chapter 25 and verse 28, uh, makes it clear uh, that there was bias or favoritism uh, shown by Jacob's parents uh, between his brothers, him and his brother, rather. Verse 28 of Genesis 25 says, And Isaac loved Esau because he ate of his game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. And they were aware of that. They showed that favoritism, and they showed the love that they had for their favorite son. And so Jacob, this was he was accustomed to this, all right? And you know the story. You know as a result of uh, Jacob deceiving his father uh, that Esau uh, became very hot and threatened to kill Jacob. And, of course, his mom then helped him escape to, uh, to Haran, to uh, his her brother's household, brother Laban, and we know that uh, uh, Jacob worked for Laban, was deceived by Laban. He, Laban actually was a better uh, deceiver and usurper than Jacob was, and uh, we know that Jacob fell in love with Rachel, uh, Laban's younger daughter, and pledged to work seven years for her hand. He did that. And then was deceived by Laban, given the older daughter, Leah, uh, and then required to work another seven years for Rachel as well. So we know that Jacob loved Rachel and favored Rachel, so much so that Leah became greatly jealous uh, and uh, wanted to spend, of course, as much intimate time with Jacob as possible. She had, and the Lord opened her womb and blessed her with six children six uh, sons and of course then Rachel became very very jealous and envious of Leah and prayed to the Lord to open her womb you know the story you know it's probably enough background uh so the, we're answering one of the questions about where uh Jacob's favorite favoritism came from the cause of his favoritism we know what the effect uh, is going to be here as uh, if you've read this this text our lesson text so let's uh, go before the throne and we'll get into our lesson text so father we do thank and praise you for lord yet another opportunity to study your precious word lord and we pray that we would be receptive to what you would have us to know about love certainly lord about not showing favoritism not only within our households among our children lord uh, but also Lord, in, within our Christian community and within the greater community, Lord, let us treat uh, one another uh, fairly with, with equal respect, Lord, uh, showing no partiality one to another, Lord. Uh, and we know that you've t and given us clear instructions how to train up our child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. You, you've given us clear instruction on how not to provoke them to wrath, Lord. And we just ask that you would seal it to our hearts, Lord, uh, and, and, and help us to, again, uh, understand clearly your word and apply it to our lives. Lord, we also pray for uh, everything that's going on in our, uh, our country, Lord. We pray for peace, Lord. We pray for godly wisdom, uh, uh, first and foremost, uh, for our spiritual leaders, Lord, certainly for our political leaders, for our courts and judges and those who have 
the oversight, Lord, over our communities, over our cities, Lord, over our states. Lord, you are the one. All We know that all authority is ordained by you, according to Romans 13, Lord. And we just pray that you give those authorities your wisdom and your uh, uh, your guidance, Lord, into how to uh, uh, to bring peace, Lord, to our to our nation, Lord. Certainly, we pray that you would uh, that you would comfort those who are suffering with this dread disease, coronavirus, Lord. We pray that you'd comfort those who've lost loved ones to it, and we pray that you would certainly that you would bring an end to it, Lord. We know uh, that you you're fully in control. And we just ask that you would bring an end to it. That you would bless those who suffered uh, economically, who've lost businesses and who've lost jobs and uh, as a result of this dread disease. And we pray that you would continue to bless us and bring us back, Lord, to uh, some sense of normalcy, Lord, in your time. We know that you, again, are fully in control. You know what's best for our nation. You know what's best for each of us individually. And again, we ask for your understanding of this word in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Since I spent so much time uh, <clears throat> in the introduction uh, let's see if we can pick up a little bit as we go through uh, our lesson text here. So our, our first division from the uh, quarterly is entitled, again, Parental Favoritism. We're going to read Genesis chapter 37, verses 2 to 4. Uh, as usual, I'll be going back between the King James Version and the NIV as uh, as I think I need to for greater clarity. So verse 2 says, These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father an evil report. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and would not speak peaceably unto him. Okay, so let's back up to... Verse 2, and verse 2a says, these are the generations of Jacob. We see this uh, phrase, uh, uh, the, the phrase that's translated that uh, in many, several places throughout Genesis. Uh, the NIV renders that this is the account of Jacob's family line. And this is just one excerpt, if you will, from the account of Jacob's line or lineage. It says, uh, part B says, Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. Now, he was uh, the youngest of uh, the, the 11 at this point. We know that all uh, 11, the first 11 and uh, the sons and the daughter were born uh, in Haran, uh, and the last, uh, after they returned to Canaan, Benjamin uh, was born of Rachel after they returned to Canaan, and, and she, Rachel actually died giving birth to Benjamin, the youngest, his very youngest son. Now, um, gives the age of, of Joseph. This is a time stamp in the Bible is good to give us time stamps in the lives of important, uh, of the more prominent uh, characters in the Bible. So he is feeding the flock with, with some of his half sibling, half brothers. Um, and we'll see. And part C says, uh, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah. She had two sons. Uh, Dan and Naphtali, and Zilpah, the, son, the sons of Zilpah. She had two sons by Jacob as well, Gad and Asher. Uh, his father, and it says his father's wives here. Uh, we know, in fact, that <clears throat> they were not 
technically his wives. They were handmaidens of his wives. And in this custom, it was uh, if, if a uh, child was born of a, a wife's husband by her handmaiden, that child, in fact, became uh, one of her children, was, was counted as one of the wife's children. So uh, we won't, I don't, it doesn't use concubine. We know that's a, that's a different term, but this is, these are handmaidens of the wives, and they were given to each of Laban's daughters as they, uh, as they were married. Uh, part D of verse 2 says, And Joseph brought <clears throat> unto his father an evil report. So Joseph is out. He is uh, tending the flock uh, and with uh, four half-brothers, and he comes back and he tells his father something. It says an evil report. We don't know exactly what what the report was. Obviously, it doesn't necessarily imply that it was some cruel or something immoral, um, but it could have been. Uh, but it, it, at least it was something that was disrespectful. It might have been loafing. It might have been a poor work ethic or some other kind of misbehavior. But it was something that the father would not have been pleased with and apparently was not pleased with. And so Joseph brings this this report back to his father and probably is immediately designated as a snitch. And this may have... Uh, it, 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 it probably... Uh, added to this uh, this hatred, this fire of hatred that I believe was actually ignited sometime before. I don't have time to do it today, but if we were to go back to Genesis chapter 33, uh, we would, uh, we would uh, read the account of uh, Jacob returning from Haran, where his uncle Laban had uh, cheated him time after time to Canaan and his brother Esau is coming with 400 men to meet him if, if you recall uh, Jacob had his family organized in groups uh, and he put he put Rachel and Joseph at the very end at the very back in case his brother was coming with some evil intentions to protect them. Well, no doubt the older brothers noticed that. You know, the wives certainly, um, the wives and concubines certainly did. And that was a clear sign of favoritism uh, for both Joseph and Rachel. And, and, and you know, it doesn't appear that Jacob made any apologies for it. Uh, he was, uh, uh, he did it unabashedly. Uh, let's go on. So, um, Verse three says, "Now Israel, and it just it just makes clear what they are already aware of. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat or tunic of many colors. Now that's only part of the reason that he loved." Joseph more than all the others. We're told elsewhere that um, Joseph really loved Rachel. Uh, he was the one that uh, he really fell in love with uh, on sight almost, and the one he had to work 14 years for Laban for. Uh, and, of course, he cherished uh, the child by her more than the others. And... Um, of course, he was old. He was 90 years old uh, at this time uh, when uh, when Joseph was born, or at the time Joseph was born. Uh, and we can go back to Genesis 30 and see that account. Uh, but he showed, made no uh, qualms about showing his favoritism and his love for uh, Joseph over the other brothers, the, his other sons. Now, any any of you who who have more than one child uh, know that uh, your children are different. 
I, I remember uh, my, my wife and I had three daughters, um, and I I was amazed at how different they were. Two of them were two years apart. The last one five years later after the, the middle one. Uh, but they're all raised in the same household, all the same environment, and you would think they would be pretty much the same. You know, uh, so much is said about people being products of their environment, but they can have vastly different uh, personalities, uh, temperaments. Uh, one was uh, very compliant, uh, uh, at least on the surface. Uh, another just outwardly uh, rebellious, you know, strong-willed. And so we know that there might be a tendency on the part of parents to favor dealing with one child more uh, uh, than another, but we are to resist any inkling, any temptation at all to show any preferential treatment. And certainly we are to love them equally. We are to appreciate them equally as God created them. And certainly we are to influence them uh, uh, and, and instruct them as uh, Ephesians uh, 6, uh, 4 tells us, we're to train them uh, in the way that God would have them. We're to train them in, in, in godly ways, and not by word only, but by example. But we are to love them equally and show no favoritism like Jacob did. Let's move on to the next division, which is dreamers' folly. Dreamers' folly. That's covered between Genesis 37, verses 5 to 11. Beginning at verse 5, And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For well, behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed hate or have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Verse 9, And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more or another dream. And behold, the sun and moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth? Bow down ourselves to thee, to the earth. And his brethren envied him, but his father observed these sayings. So let's move quickly through these uh, verses. Verse, verse 5 again. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. Now, uh, Joseph uh, is no fool, and, and Joseph knows that his father is overtly showing favoritism toward him, and his brothers are not appreciating that. He has to know this. He's 17 years old, and he knows that they are... Uh, perhaps uh, uh, jealous and enraged already. Uh, but then uh, he has this dream, and we know he goes on not only to have uh, prophetic dreams, but to interpret dreams as well. He interpreted the baker and the butler's dreams when he was in prison in Egypt, and he eventually interpreted the Pharaoh's dream, uh, which led uh, him to, uh, to prominence and to, to be the salvation for his family. Now, um, but you, you have, you, no, let's go on. Uh, so verse, verse 6 and 7 say, And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose 
and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. Now, uh, they were actually uh, harvesting uh, grain, and of course the grain grows on stalks, and they were cutting the stalks down, and they were bundling them up and leaving them for transport back to the threshing floor, to the threshing floor, perhaps by some, by means of some cart, and and he uh, he says his this is a dream now. His sheaf stood up instead of laying flat; it, it just stood upright, and his brother's sheaf stood upright as well. But somehow they they bowed to uh, Joseph's sheaf, and the and the inference here is very clear. I mean, uh, he knew what it was, as did his brothers. They knew exactly what he was inferring by the dream. And, you know, I meant to say something about um, Jacob as well. Jake, you know, uh, as I was studying the lesson, I, I, I jotted a question, you know, how could Joseph, Jacob have been so daft? You know, I mean, he had to know that his brothers uh, were envying um, Joseph, especially when he made him this beautiful tunic uh, that was certainly not a work garment. It was something that uh, basically he was uh, where perhaps signifying uh, his status and prominence. Uh, don't know whether he was an overseer of his brothers, but uh, you could think that uh, he was being positioned to be that. But anyway, let's go back. So uh, to the sheaves. Uh, so they understood what he was uh, inferring by this. Now, Joseph is 17, and I raised another question. How could he have been so deaf, you know, and not understand um, how his brothers were taking this? Now, Jacob didn't care, apparently. Uh, Jacob was the authority in the house, and, you know, if you don't like what I do, then that's tough. Uh, Joseph, on the other hand, was the youngest brother and the, the least likely to be served by any of the others, okay? Uh, and so uh, that's why they were offended by what he said. And of course, they uh, they hated him the more, as verse 8 tells us here. Uh, and verse 8 says, And his brethren said to him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? Or shall thou indeed have dominion over us or authority over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Now, some of it, we might think, well, you know, about when we were 17, well, there was some sibling rivalry, certainly in my household, in our household, um, I had, uh, there were four boys, I had three brothers, and then uh, the oldest was our sister. And certainly there was rivalry uh, between us, but uh, I don't know that <clears throat> uh, any of us would have intentionally done something that would have caused prolonged uh, agony uh, or, or or hatred uh, uh, of the, of any of the others uh, in that in that household setting. Uh, we certainly we did offend each other from time to time, but this is more than that. So you have to wonder uh, what was Joseph thinking? Joseph may have been. I mean, certainly I think he realized that um, uh, this there was some something significant about the dream. Uh, don't know that he had a personal relationship with the Lord, with God at this time, but I believe he perhaps knew that there was something significant about the dream. And the next one, he probably thinks, confirms that. All right, so let's go on. Uh, but before we do, let's let's just look at a couple of verses in Proverbs that it says something about how we are to use discretion and how we are to be uh, use our 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 words uh, more appropriately and more discreetly. Verse, this is Proverbs chapter two, verse eleven uh, reads: Discretion shall preserve thee; understanding shall keep thee. And Proverbs twenty five eleven says: A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Apples of gold framed in silver. Now, of course, this was long before. God gave the law, and certainly long before Solomon and uh, the Proverbs that he wrote. 
Uh, but even in Daniel, it was long before Daniel as well. Read Daniel 7:28 as well. Uh, Daniel was troubled by what he heard, but he kept the things in his heart. He didn't speak them. So uh, you would think that Jacob, I'm sorry, Joseph would have had a little more discretion. But on the other hand, how else would we have known about the dreams had he not blurted them out to his brothers? Huh? Verse 9, and he dreamed yet another dream and told it his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. Uh, now, as I said earlier, he probably looks at this as confirmation that this is this is from God. You know, uh, I'm anytime God does something twice, uh, it's for emphasis. If he says something twice, it's for emphasis. And he uh, uh, he he did that. Uh, in the dream that he, he gave to Pharaoh. Uh, if we fast forward to Genesis uh, chapter 42 and read verses uh, 6 to 9, then 43, verse 26 and 28, and then 44, 14, and chapter 50, 18, we see that the Lord gives Pharaoh Two, two separate dreams that basically meant the same thing. Hey, there's seven years of famine coming. You know, there's the seven ripe years of corn, and then, they, then the, the wind blows, the hot wind, and, and blasts them and withers them. There's seven fat cow, and then the next thing you know, they're pull, they're, they're bony. So God gives, he gives that second dream for emphasis and for confirmation, and that's no doubt what... Uh, what Joseph is thinking here. Hey, this there really must be something to this. But again, having seen the reaction of his brothers to the first, uh, to his uh, explaining the first dream, you would think <clears throat> he would have used more discretion in this case. But uh, he may have thought, hey, I'm, I'm. Uh, if he if he knew the Lord personally, he may have thought he is proclaiming something that the Lord was giving him and something that was important that they should take note of. Verse 10. And his father, excuse me, and he told it to his father and to his brethren, and his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come and bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? Now, by this time, um, well, uh, his his father, you know, he is thinking that this is significant enough to bring to his father, uh, and of course, the the symbolism is is very clear. Okay, the the sun and the sun and the moon represents the father and the mother, uh, and even though um, Rachel had died at this point. Uh, her sister Leah actually uh, took over as his mother, uh, if you will, his adopted mother. But she filled that role for for Rachel. And what uh, his father immediately recognized the uh, the inference here that his father and mother were going to do obeisance or bow down to him in a, a recognizing uh, his authority uh, as as well as his 11 brothers, all of which who were older than him. I mean, the, uh, the other 10, all of which who were older than him. And of course, in that patriarchal society, the father, of course, held the primary role, uh, primary authority in the household. And of course, the older uh, brothers would have had more authority than the next to the youngest at this point. And of course, uh, uh, Jacob is saying, you know, you got, you've got to be, you got to be out of your mind. And even though I, I love you more, uh, I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna be under your authority. Now we know, in fact, years later, when Joseph is made prime minister of all of Egypt, that his father, while not necessarily under his authority, is certainly under his care under his watch care and under his protection as, as were his brothers and their families. Verse 11, 
Verse 11a, and his brethren envied him. They, now, we've moved from hatred to another, uh, one of the commentators says, uh, even stronger emotion of uh, envy. Uh, and we know hatred can move people to, to violence and to do uh, drastic things, but envy can as well. And, and uh, they're, they're really invested in this now. Uh, and uh, they, uh, uh, I think we passed over the verse where it says they could not speak peaceably to him. They could not speak any uh, nicely to him. They could not say anything good to him because of this, uh, first this hatred and now this jealousy or this envy that they have. But... The second part of that verse says, part B of 11 says, but his father kept the matter in mind uh, from the NIV. In other words, he thought about these things. He, he wondered maybe if they had some significance. Now, let's keep in mind, Jacob was no stranger to dreams himself. You remember when he left uh, Bethel, uh, when he left uh, actually Canaan, uh, and came to Bethel, uh, he dreamed, he saw Jacob, remember Jacob's ladder, and, and, and God gave him uh, the covenant promise, uh, and, uh, and of course, God later told him, uh, after 20 years in Haran, that it was time to return to, to Canaan. So uh, Jacob has, uh, has had some dreams, or God has spoken to him through dreams, as well, so he is pondering these things, just as the Lord Jesus' mother Mary did, when uh, uh, Simeon uh, prophesied, and when uh, the uh, the widow the widow prophesied, uh, Anna prophesied, and uh, she kept these things in her heart. You know, she pondered these things, and as these things, uh, as history unfolded, or time time revealed the significance of the words that were pronounced. And just to go back to the the brother's jealousy, there's nothing at all new about that. We remember uh, that uh, the first brothers, Cain and Abel, uh, what actually caused the death of Abel was Cain's jealousy uh, because God favored his sacrifice more than Cain. So nothing new about this. We're going to move very quickly into our next and final division here, which is entitled, When Love is Lost, When Love is Lost. And uh, I'm gonna read verses 23, 24, and then 28. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph of his coat, and his coat of many colors or his coat of many colors, or his tunic of many colors, was on that was on him. Verse twenty-four, a, and they took him and cast him into a pit, or a dry cistern. They make it clear that there's no water in this pit or cistern. And then verse twenty-eight says, then there passed by Midianite merchants, and they drew and lifted up Joseph out of the pit and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver, and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now, um, backing up to verse 23, uh, when they, uh, and you have to really go back and, and read uh, verses, uh, read, really read the whole uh, chapter but if we backed up to verse 12, it, it tells you how um, uh, they see Joseph coming. Now, backing up to the first part of the chapter, uh, Jacob has told Joseph to go out and check on his brethren. They are out uh, feeding the flock. And uh, Joseph, as you may, Jacob rather, as you may remember, was a very successful herdsman or shepherd, and he had huge flocks that he brought from from uh, from Herod. And of course, 
to to feed huge flocks they had to roam widely to find grazing areas and so they had to go some distance from home to feed the flock so he sends um his young well he sends joseph to check on them and to bring him word again now uh we know some have suggested that he was spying he went to spy on them uh but um and he goes in his in his tunic his multicolored tunic which by the way was very expensive uh to to make uh garments uh with multiple colors in that day almost 2000 BC uh had to be, was very expensive so he uh goes to this town and then he's Toba there in Dothan and he goes to Dothan and as he's approaching and they see him a mile away in this colorful tunic they plot how they're going to kill him they're going to going to kill him throw his body in a pit they're going to put blood the blood of an animal I mean his blood rather on the on the garment and then they're going to claim that uh, an animal killed him uh and Reuben of course the oldest uh older brother uh, uh said no no let's not kill him let's just throw him in the pit and Reuben intended to rescue him later from the other brothers and he went off and did something or other maybe tending the sheep and when he comes back uh the situation that we're just about to read about has happened. All right, so these brothers have been uh, nursing this uh, hatred and this envy for years, I'm sure. And finally now, uh, uh, young Joseph, young Joe is going to get his comeuppance. All right, so they said uh, they stripped him of his robe. And that that act... Uh, was one of ripping his authority or what his presumed authority, whatever authority he thought he had over them, off him, you know. Uh, and and in the process, I'm sure they probably ripped it. But, uh, and, and they, it says here, the coat of many colors, you know, indicating that, hey, this is the, the thing that, gave him some stature and was a constant reminder of their father's greater love for him than them. Uh, that's what they ripped off, the, 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 the symbol of uh, his father's love for him, greater love for him. And again, at um, Reuben's suggestion or command, instruction, they threw him into this pit, this dry cistern. And then verse 28 says, uh, and I'll read that from the NIV. So when the Midianite merchants came by, they were close to a a route, a trade route for caravans going into Egypt. When the Midianite merchants came by, his brethren pulled Joseph out of the cistern and sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites. And they, and they took him to Egypt. Now you have to read the verses in between and you read where they... Uh, they they realize, hey, uh, we really don't want his blood on our hands. He is, after, after all, he's our brother. Uh, and what good is it if, if we kill him? Uh, let's sell him. Let's get something out of this. They saw, they looked, and they saw this caravan coming. And they said, let's sell him. And they thought that would be the end of their problems with, with Joseph. Uh, and, of course, they hatched the scheme of putting uh, the blood. And we know later they did after they sold him. Uh, they killed uh, uh, a goat, and they put the blood of the goat on the torn garment of uh, the tunic, if you will, of Joseph to take back to their father. Now, um, just one, one more word about this verse 28, uh, because it uses Midianites, and uh, Ishmaelites. And of course, we know they were two different people. However, the, Midi the Ishmaelites, of course, uh, were descendants of Ishmael, who was born of Hagar, born by of, of Abraham and Hagar. Uh, Midian was born of uh, Abraham's last wife, Keturah, which died after, who he married after Sarah. And uh, uh, of course, uh, they... Uh, were intermarried uh, to the point, or at least one commentator suggests they'd intermarried to the point where uh, they were almost indistinguishable. Uh, and so the names Midianite and Ishmaelite were used interchangeably. Another commentator suggested, hey, the caravan was owned by uh, the Ishmaelites, but 
the Midianites were actually kind of uh, 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 brokers, if you will, or they actually were middlemen. Uh, and, and so they were actually making up, they actually made up the, uh, uh, the caravan. And uh, whatever, the, the, the point is that the brothers sold him out of hatred, out of envy, into slavery for 20 and for 20 pieces of silver. The significance of that we're not sure of, but it was probably the common price of a slave back in, in those days. And, and, and later on, we know that uh, Joseph recalls when they did that, and he's talking to them as prime minister of Egypt. He said they meant it for evil, and they certainly did. But God meant it for good. God knew why uh, all of this was happening, just as God knows why everything that's going on in our lives uh, and in our country is going on uh, right now. Uh, we just need to try. And God is fully in control, as he was with Joseph's life and certainly with securing the future of Israel, of Israel's uh, lineage, lineage or posterity. He is certainly in control of everything that is going to go on in this country. Uh, we just pr we need to pray again for wisdom for those who, are, who have the authority over us. And, 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 and just to wrap up, uh, I think the lesson, that the takeaway is certainly that we don't want to show partiality. Uh, certainly not in our households, in our home, among our children or other family members. Uh, and we certainly, uh, not in the Christian community, uh, we want to treat others with respect. We want to treat others uh, to appreciate the gifts that God has given them and the, and the uniqueness that God has given them as God has commanded us to. And I'm sorry we went long uh, on this lesson, but we pray that uh, we have been reminded of uh, how 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 uh, much of a problem how uh, uh, envy and 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 partiality uh, can we're going to learn more about that when we get back to James can have devastating effects on families and can lead to violence can lead to uh, hatred envy and ultimately violence so we pray that God will bless you and keep you until such time as we meet again. Amen.